the go-to vehicle for any brand. Every brand is trying to get onto the crossover bandwagon as much as they can. It brings them the most sales. Mercedes-Benz is not far behind. They have the GLA, GLB and the GLC. All these are crossovers and the GLB is the perfect blend where a compact footprint with optional 7 seats. Now they are also expanding their EQ range which is their electric car range for every model they have. So they have also introduced a compact crossover. Welcome everybody to the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQB. Let's see how this electrified crossover is. The EQB looks unmistakably like the GLB which is not a bad thing. The only difference is that the grille is not a ventilated one because they don't need vents to cool the engine. There is no engine. So it's all been blocked out by a plaque and it's very much the same design language that has been used in the other EQ cars. It's a very smart looking crossover. The side profile of the EQB is very quirky, very different and I personally like it a lot. It stands out on the road and not many cars have these boxy rectangular silhouette that this car carries off very well. It's very similar to the regular gas powered GLB. You've got some chrome elements and some cuts and creases on the side profile which look really good. The C pillar reminds me a lot of the GLS which is a great starting point to be honest. You've got some great looking 19 inch wheels. Silver rims with blue elements which highlight the EQB design theme that Mercedes-Benz is trying to build with the EQ brand. Again, it's a very nice looking side profile, stands out on the road. When you come to the rear, the major difference between the EQB and the GLB are, is the massive uh, light bar on the rear. It's an all LED unit and it stands out, it's very bright and it looks really good. Personally, it's one of the major design elements of this car which I personally like a lot. You've got some basic badging so it's got the EQB 350, the 4MATIC because they are two variants. I think there's a lower variant with the 250 as well. So this is the 350, the higher battery, the higher performance one. You've got some chrome elements on the rear just like the other parts of the car and it looks pretty good. When you do open the tailgate from the key, so there are a variety of ways to open the tailgate. You can open from the Mercedes-Benz logo which flips. You can kick and open it and then you can open from the key as well, which opens up to a very respectable boot space. I have the third row folded. The third row is an option. It's a $1,500 or $1,700 option. And you can put some kids in the back, but I'd rather have it as a five-seater with a big boot and the third row folded. You can put in a lot of luggage with the third row folded. And I think that's the most practical view that the GLB has because it has way more space than even the GLC, I personally feel, which makes it a bit more value for money when it comes to space packaging. What can I say? Mercedes has p positioned the GLB and the EQB just right. and it's a very traditional Mercedes look on the dash which is not a bad thing. Uh, this is from the smaller Mercedes, they're not like the EQS and the EQ with the bigger screens and much more luxury. This is resembling to the regular GLB and the GLA. So you've got the three central vents with fabulous ambient lighting inside. In fact, the whole ambient lighting is really nice. You've got a host of different colors and customization you can do which actually looks really, really good at night. You've got a lot of leather and gloss black, which is the major theme in here. So you've got leather, gloss black, gloss black around the dash. You've got some gloss black on the doors. A very, very nice steering which in cover uh, in leather and gloss black as well. You've got the touch controls on the steering to control the center screen and the main screen inside the speedometer gauge. I'm a bit divided on the, the speedometer screen because it's a bit too many scrolling you have to do to get basic information so either you can choose your trip meter or you can choose what song you're listening to and change songs which can be a bit annoying but once you get used to it it's not that bad you have physical AC controls and you do the screen also does lots of changes so you can control the AC from the screen as well but I personally find that the screen could have been better utilized because the screen itself is very nice the touch response is very good but it has been a bit on the buggy side for me especially when I try to connect to CarPlay since there is no wireless CarPlay so I use the wired CarPlay especially with this Type-C port it bugs my phone and I've not only with my phone I've tried with three or four iPhones it bugs that up and it bugs the head unit as well so it's very laggy it takes two or three reconnections to get it going but once it does it's not bad however the CarPlay does not utilize the whole size of the screen it's only half the screen the resolution is really good but they could have maybe enhanced the experience by using the whole screen size which would have looked much better because the screen itself is not the biggest you'd see in the market with 
you know current trending screens that are huge like you know 13 in fact mercedes themselves with the eqs they have such huge screens this is a welcome change to see such a small screen you've got a touchpad as well so if you don't want to use the touch you can use this touchpad to just use your fingers to navigate around you've got some physical buttons for the drive modes the volumes and stuff you've got this little nice little wrist uh, resting area so you can rest your wrist and then use it a wireless charger two cup holders you've got a split center glove box which you can put lots of stuff actually which is actually pretty nice it's a practical and the GLB platform has always been for practicality and this EQB is no different mercedes has nailed it the seats themselves are also pretty good you've got a lot of you know adjustments for lower back upper back you've got manual extendable under thigh supports obviously this is the quirky mercedes thing where if a new person sits in a mercedes they can never figure out where the seat controls are because it's on the door but once you get hang of it it's actually pretty cool and it's pretty intuitive once you get used to it when i go to a next car i might just look for a button here and it won't be there so that's that's a bit of a culture shock you might have to adjust once in a while but yeah it all feels very nice the aluminum bits everything all that pieces you touch and feel feels very premium and mercedes has nailed it inside here here of the eqb and it's got the same proportions of the glb which is not a bad thing you have so much knee room so much leg room to tuck your feet so much head room this is where the boxy shape comes and helps so much space with head room three people can easily fit the transmission hump isn't very intrusive so the third passenger is very much welcome here and it feels very nice the windows are pretty big you've got the panoramic sunroof it's actually a really nice place to sit in the back you do also have a center armrest with cup holders if you pop them out which is again a nice touch small ac vents and charging ports as well here type c so this car has only type c ports this car has moved on with the times no type a ports so it expects you to have a 2022 onwards phone because they come with type c cables but yeah again it's very practical very nice and it's one of the better places to be in this car now I'm behind the wheel of the EQB so let's see how this electric crossover drives let's get the numbers out of the way this has a 70.5 kilowatts per hour battery produces about 288 horsepower helps this crossover go from 0 to 100 in 6.2 seconds it has four matic all wheel drive and yeah it drives really well just like any electric crossover it starts off very easy zero noise and uh, all the torque at your right foot disposal you don't actually have to mash the throttle to get going which is actually a nice thing to do you know once in a while the ride is actually really nice i had the amg one before the glb 35 and that was extremely stiff in fact one of the stiffest cars i've driven in a long time this on the other hand is one of the comfier cars i've driven and even though this is running on 19 inch wheels it's actually pretty comfortable it soaks up the bumps really well i'm surprised how comfortable this is the combination of the seats and the suspension it actually works really well drive modes in this car make it completely different so there are three drive modes eco sport and comfort eco really dulls it down so when you there's kick down it cuts down performance it maxes up to 130 kph and it's to maximize the range which you can get about 320 to 330 kilometers on a charge which is not too bad it's claimed 360 so the disparity isn't bad there are cars with much more claimed and real life differences so a 20 to 30 kilometer difference in range between claimed and actual isn't actually that bad It's not the highest in its segment. I know there are cars with closer to 400 kilometers range, so that would have been better. But again, if you know that you can get 320 to 330 guaranteed, you can plan your journeys around it. Not the biggest deal breaker. Obviously, you do have to deal with the patchy charging infra that uh, electric cars have currently in Ontario. So if you can work around that, it works well. Otherwise. It drives rides really well. The steering feel is really good. It handles pretty well. There is a bit of bad roll because it's a top heavy car. But again, otherwise it really works. There's regen modes as well. So if you put it to minus, it high it has a higher regen, which actually doesn't make sense. I thought if you do it to plus, it would mean higher regen. But plus means it's more smooth and in minus, D minus, it means it has the highest regen. But it on it works well. It's almost like one pedal drive. Again, I can't fault the way this car drives. Listen then. the 2023 Mercedes Benz EQB 350 well it has lots of things going for it and i personally like it for its quirks and lots of cool things this car comes with firstly i like the way this car looks and it's extremely practical you can put lots of luggage lots of people in the car comfortably and go cruising speaking of cruising the range could have been better the 323 30 km range could have been better at this price range which is about $85000 canadian pretty steep but 
there is no other car that can offer this kind of practicality with electrification. I know you can find other cars with more range, perhaps more performance for this price with electric power, but none of them can carry this kind of practicality with people and luggage at the same time. And that's what make this, makes this car extremely unique proposition in the market today. Perhaps Mercedes-Benz was planning this from the day one. And honestly, it's a great plan to enter a very, you know, unique niche space in the market. And this is what the EQB 350 is. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.